New season, new me, baby. Isn't it pretty rewarding picking up new champions that you know are going to be strong the whole season? AKA every bruiser this time around. But when picking up new champions, you guys know there's always that risk that your pick gets nerfed to the ground and all your effort goes to waste. To this day, I'm still angry that I put in hundreds of hours into Twisted Fate and Rise only for them to be completely useless in solo queue. Thanks, pro players. Which is why I'm super grateful for this champion and build I'm about to share with you. This build has been strong every season I've used it in and basically unchanged for nearly a decade now. God, that is depressing to say. And for those of you who don't know, I'm Hector, a 5 role challenger player. I'm just saying that because it means I have access to any sweaty champion I want in any role to climb with. I could pick up a Kali, Graves, Jax, I have all these disgusting options to climb with, but this is still one of my immediate go-to picks when I want to climb as high as possible in solo queue. It's support Nami. Not with that garbage though, but with these items instead. First, let me tell you what kind of build this is, then I'll explain why it's not as troll as it looks. This is a very chill build that takes almost zero effort to pull off. I'm talking you got Singles Inferno on in the background while you play Levels of Easy. And yet, it has the carry potential very close to even the sweatiest of champions like I said, Graves, Nidalee, Aurelia, you name it. Upon seeing it though, it may seem like a smurf build for high level players to stomp low elo. No way an average support can go these items every game and not be griefing, right? I had the same thought, so I first recommended this build to a gold elo friend of mine. He's not very good, and he's never played Nami before. But it instantly became one of his favorite builds that he has the most fun on, and he immediately got a 60% win rate even without half of the tips I'm going to be giving you in this guide. So why is it good? Well, the first reason is that solo queue is kinda stupid. I don't have to tell you that. Every game is chaos and you never know what to expect. So one of the best qualities I look for in a champion is their ability to be versatile. Adapting to your teammates' random decisions is really valuable, and Nami is good to great at everything she does. She can engage, disengage, play front to back, roams very well, can play for lane, etc. Which allows you to play well with your teammates no matter what shenanigans they're getting up to. The second key quality I look for in a champion that makes them OP is having early agency while still having late game insurance. Every top lane main hates Gangplank for this reason. He will dominate the lane phase whenever he's meta, and he will still scale to one-shot your entire team later into the game. Early power lets you have control over the laning phase, which is where many games can be decided, but having insurance for later into the game in case your team Omega trolled early is also really good for consistently carrying games. This is why late game champions like Victor, Azir, and Jinx tend to be really popular and perma picked during patches where they're strong during the laning phase. Now most people know that Nami is a lane bully, but many players think she kind of falls off later. Trust me, she definitely doesn't with this build. Nami randomly has crazy good AP ratios on her abilities starting with her passive. To put it lightly, speeding up people in League is very broken. And unlike other enchanters such as Lulu, all of Nami's abilities speed up her teammates so she is constantly providing bursts of movement speed to everyone around her. Stacking ability power to make this even stronger is very, very good. On top of that, once you get AP, her E becomes a disgusting slow. Look how little this Zoe can move once my E's been applied to her. Same thing with this Karthus a little later. He may as well be stunned because he cannot move an inch. The best part is that you're providing all of these movement speed advantages a billion yards away from any danger on top of a bunch of extra damage. You're about to see a terrible LeBlanc combo, but pay attention to all the blue numbers that pop up around her target. It doesn't matter that my LeBlanc's combo was super scuffed. I just gave her over 900 extra damage from all the way back there. And look, my spells are already almost back up to do that again. Basically, you want to stack ability power because your buffs and debuffs are really broken with high amounts of AP. You make the game really easy to play for your teammates, and it makes it almost impossible for them to mess up when you're around them. Well, almost. 
This might sound like a crazy take, but here goes. To emphasize how strong she is late game, I would personally rather have a 6 item Nami than a full build Vladimir or Kassadin on my team any day. And we haven't even talked about her W's unique scaling yet, but let's hold off on that for a moment and break down her build first. Like I said, your goal is to stack as much ability haste and flat AP as possible so you can constantly dish out powerful buffs. So you go support item, dark seal, then you build lucidity boots and imperial mandate. Now this is very important. You go medjai's every single game. Yes, no matter what. So you can see I just died a silly death here and I've only got one stack left on my dark seal, but I will still buy medjai's. That is because it is the most cost efficient flat ability power item in the game. Plus, it's a super cheap legendary item which gives you an extra 15 AP from your mandate. As an enchanter, you also play fights from really far away most of the time. It's difficult for you to die unless you miss position, so you stack it easily anyway. It is not a smurf item, it is not a purely snowball item. Buy it every game, no matter what's going on or how far behind you are, and it's almost always going to be a good purchase. Okay, now you can round out your build with mostly anything you need. That being said, I almost always prioritize going Deathcat now, as it is by far the best item you can build for carrying. Of course, on average, you get to build Deathcap 1 out of every 3 games, so it's definitely not something you can get all the time, but unless I really need another support item, it's what I almost always build after completing Medjai's. <sighs> now before moving on, I have to address it. Every time I've recommended this build to someone, I always get the why not Sork Boots and Ludens and Shadow Flame to one-shot people. Okay, so magic penetration is actually not that good on Nami because a lot of your damage comes from your E, which you give to your teammates. Penetration doesn't work with your E, it's based on your teammate's pen. So as you can see, before this Ari bought Sorks, you can see it was doing 24 damage. After she buys her penetration, you can see my E starts to do 26. Ultimately, this is a utility build that happens to deal some good damage. You can do the funny AP one-shot montage stuff if you want, it's just not that good. Before we get into the best tricks I know for how to carry as Nami, I strongly recommend you check out our website Skillcapped. It teaches League of Legends the right way, from the low elo perspective, which is why our members tend to climb stupidly fast. We don't waste time on teaching you strategies that only work in pro play, because low elo is simply a different game. It's way more chaotic, and playing wrong is often right if you want to carry the worst teammates possible, even as a support. So check us out after this. I'm told I'll get a free pizza if you use my discount link in the description. And of course, if skill cap doesn't work for you when actively using it, you can just get a refund anyway, so there's no risk. Okay, now that you know why I think this champion is OP and how to build her, let's round out this guide with some tips. Remember how I mentioned her W scaling? Well, you see, this is literally my favorite ability in the game because it actually has a very unique mechanic to it. So her W technically has a really high AP scaling of either 125 or 100% of your AP based on your targets. That's pretty high on a basic ability, right? But it's technically balanced around the fact that supports typically build little amounts of AP and each bounce gets weaker. What most people don't play around though is that her W has a second AP ratio. After 200 ability power, each bounce actually begins to get stronger. Again, this is one of the reasons we're stacking AP. This is why I love the ability so much, because at some point in the mid game, you need to start making a conscious effort to completely change the way you press the spell to get max value out of it. Normally, you cast your W on your intended target, but after 200 AP, you want the third bounce to go into your main target. So for example, you reach around 400 AP every single game very easily with this build. If I want to get max damage on this dummy, I'd want to cast it on this other one first. This is already a 100 damage difference, and this only becomes more relevant the more and more AP you have. For example, I have over 600 ability power this game, and I'm just having fun killing the enemy team. However, I mess up and W Ezreal first, barely missing this kill. I remember to stop being trash for a moment, and when I flash in, you can see I W myself first 
to get more damage out of my W, this time actually finishing him off. This also matters a lot if you're healing, of course, as you can spike someone's HP a lot more this way. Now, to be honest, min-maxing your bounces isn't something you have to do. You can win on this champion by autopilot pressing E and W on your teammates. Remember how I said I gave this build to my friend? He doesn't even know this, and he's doing really well without it. But this is my favorite designed ability in the game, and I constantly find myself trying to get max value from bounces, even at mediocre amounts of AP, just because it's really fun? I know, having fun in League, cringe. IMO, it's just a really cool ability, have fun with it. Min-maxing your bounces isn't something you have to do to win on her. Don't worry about it if you don't care to do it. This next tip though can actually be very important to securing kills. You see, Nami tends to work best with champions who can dash forward to reach their target and apply her E. This is why Nami Lucian is so popular as a combo as most of you know. Remember this LeBlanc clip from earlier? To be really good at Nami, you also want to get your W's damage on your teammate's target. So look at what I do here. If I press W on LeBlanc now, the bounce obviously won't reach Kai'Sa. What you need to do is time your W right before your teammate dashes. This way, you're still in range to cast it. Then, as it travels, your teammate dashes, gets in range of the enemy, and you get your W's damage bounce off. Getting the timing on this right can sometimes be a bit tricky, as you have to predict the exact moment your teammate will dash, which requires some game sense. So again, it's one of those min-maxy things you don't need to do, but it definitely helps score way more kills when you do it. Now, if you end up playing this build a lot, you're going to start realizing how OP your buffs actually are by how easily you allow your teammates to delete people. But when you know you're super powerful and your teammates don't go in when you buff them, it can get really triggering. Like this Varus, I pressed E on him, which would let him get in range to auto and murder the Ezreal but he just isn't aware of it. Unfortunately, there's no solution to this besides just climb LP. But don't get me wrong, this build is still very good in low elo, but it is way more fun when you're with a duo you trust or in like masters plus elo. But there is one way to make sure you don't waste your E too often. You can actually press it while your teammate's projectile is in the air. I see my poppy auto attack this Darius. Now I know my E isn't going to be a waste, so I pressed a spell while the projectile is in the air. This is again just another small tip, but good to know when you're working with less than competent players. Okay, those were the optional, more try-hard tips to know. Now let's cover some really basic Nami stuff that you should do every single game. For starters, I'm in the same boat as you guys. If you've played Nami before, you'll know that landing bubble is impossible. It's actually just a myth that you can land a spell while the enemy is moving. So the most basic but really good combo you need to know is just R into Q. Landing your wave at close range is much easier than landing Q, so you can just wave into a guaranteed CC chain. Easy peasy. As for your ultimate, my best tip is to just chill with it. A lot of players on Nami feel pressured to immediately press the spell. I mean, I get it. The ability is very strong, it does a lot of damage, CCs, and goes very far and then your opponents just lazily walk out of it with zero effort. So depending on the range, your ult is way too easy to avoid. So be patient with it. It's okay to not send a spell immediately, and to instead wait for an opportunity when your opponents have fully committed. Remember, this champion is very versatile. It's okay to save it for disengaging as well as starting a fight. Also, if you see a fight brewing, you want to consider waiting for your opponents to get into a more narrow corridor. This spell is very broken in the jungle. Instead of pressing your ult immediately, you can often win games by waiting for those key moments when your opponents trap themselves in a juicy corridor angle. Oh, and your Q and ultimate also give you movement speed when they land or pass through your allies. I don't have a clip of this mattering right now, but trust me when I say knowing this is surprisingly relevant. And that's about it. Like I said, this is a really chill champion. You don't need to know that much to have insane success on her. There is definitely skill expression for those of you who want it, but boy can you autopilot and win games by just pressing E and W on cooldown. Which brings us to the final tips you need how to afford this. Needless to say, buying a death cap costs mucho dinero. How can I possibly even recommend this? 
Well, in solo queue, especially in low elo, there's so much random chaos and fighting that you're bound to rack up a lot of kills and assists, which will definitely make buying this build possible. But there's a few rules I follow on Nami to make sure I'm always strong and my buffs can carry games. First, it is good to take kills early into the game to get to your mandate faster. Nami has one of the best one item spikes in the game, so being able to rush your mandate fast is worth annoying your ADC. This is definitely worth it and you can stop taking kills after completing your mandate. 2. If you watch skill cap guides, they may tell you to not share tower gold kinda like this. Typically this is really grief to do because you should be funneling gold to your carry. But with this build, you better believe you're the carry, even if your team doesn't know it. Funny thing is, in high elo, I'd immediately get called a win trader by my Yasuo here. But no one gets mad if you do this in low elo because no one even knows how troll it is for you to do. Finally, I really limit how many control wards I buy. I basically don't buy a single one unless I'm going to contest Baron or Dragon. I mention this in a lot of my guides and I really should explain it in more detail later, but control wards are very overrated in solo queue. They're usually just a waste of gold, so only buy one or two per game at most. Trust me on that. And that is it. I know the build seems silly and that there's no way it works, but trust me, it is one of the best carry builds I've ever found. I love playing Nami this way and hope you find similar success on her. Anyway, see ya.